Here we are, live. Uh, good evening, everyone, or good day, or good morning. Or Hi, guys. Uh, Hello. We are yeah. here with Anna from Stellar Darling, as you can see. Uh, how are you, Anna? I am pretty fine. How are you guys? Well, we we are good, considering the situation. We are good. <laughs> we we do not have any diseases at, at the moment, so that's great. Yeah, we are surviving. That's carry great. on, carry on. Yeah, we just have to kind of hang in there now, I guess. Yeah, that's well. As a musician, as musicians, we are used to it. I think so. That's it's not a big difference. You know, it's just it's just different in the context. It's not the 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 way to live. Oh, we already have a lot of people saying hi, hi Andreas, hi Andrew. Yeah. And hi. Hello. Hi everyone. Hi Morgan. Morgan. Bonjour. Hi. Dex. Oh. Dex. A lot of people. So, uh, how are you coping with the situation, Anna? It's always the first question I do. Uh, yeah, yeah, understandably. Um, I'm coping well, I have to say. Um, you know, of course, it's really hard not having gigs and all. Um, I think we got three of our tours were cancelled, so that's almost 80 shows. <sighs> But, you know, that's just the initial shock is over. And I think we just all have to make the best out of it. And whether that's writing music or just working on other projects, you know, we can't change how it is. It's shit. We all have to stick together. And the whole part about lockdowns and quarantines, I'm completely used to that. Because I <laughs> got myself in my studio for months. So, you know, that's really not a big deal to me. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, what's the difference, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. It, it's sad. It's really sad to see what's happening. And I really hope that we all get over it somehow. Yeah, somehow. And I hope soon as well. Because, well, I, I don't know uh, if for you uh, work at the same way. But uh, in the first, well, I, I say the first lockdown because we already are in a second lockdown here. In Italy, but <laughs> uh, in our first lockdown back in March, uh, I didn't have any inspiration to write new music uh, because I I don't know. Well, maybe we just we released the new album during the lockdown, so uh, maybe we didn't have any more ideas at the time. But then. Without uh, living the normal life, everyday life, uh, it was just being home, working on projects and all that stuff. I didn't get the inspiration to write new music. But now I feel some differences because when we got back out, and uh, even if now we are locked in our homes again, uh, I do have some more inspiration. I want to write new music. What, what about you? Yeah, it's actually interesting because it was very similar for me. Um, you know, I had this romantic vision of me writing three albums during the lockdown. None of that happened. <laughs> um, I was very productive in a way. I did a lot of studio work and reading and whatever, but and practicing. But, you know, this these magical moments of inspiration, unfortunately, didn't come. So instead, I just worked on old stuff. Um, we worked on a new song with Stellar Darling, um, but which is actually also in the works since 2018, so that doesn't really count. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think now, slowly, I'm going to get back into it. I already have some ideas, so I hope. Yeah, and I hope for you guys that it comes back too. <laughs> Uh, yes, we, we hope the same, but we are already working on something new. So, yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see what this situation carries. Yeah, uh, in a way, in a way, um, it's, it's strange to say something like that. But the first lockdown 
helped me to prepare for the second one. I don't know how to say it, but now I'm more prepared than the first the first one. The first one I was a little bit confused and uh, too much focused on the, on what I, I had to do in, in that time. Right now I'm more inspired as you said, Fajo. So it depends from one people to, to the other. Too bad that you are a drummer and we need notes as well to write music. So yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank I'm, you trying, so. I'm trying to learn the piano, but I'm totally a uh, dumb in it. So you have to help me to, uh, you know, take the, out are, the, the ideas from- uh, Are from, you using the black the, keys as well? Yeah. Oh, that's great. I, I, I learned that. <laughs> that's great. Oh, it's called song in C major. <laughs> <laughs> you know, C major when he was happy, A minor when he was very sad, and that yeah, was that was it. That was just that's all you need. Yeah, <laughs> there is also, but he doesn't have an electronic piano, so he can't transpose. So <laughs> he, he writes everything on an acoustic piano. Actually, uh, it's very hard. If, if, yeah, I, I record myself with the phone and um, sometimes I launch some curses when I do some mistakes, but, you know, <laughs> some, some ideas came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to say it. Whatever. I mean, yeah. <laughs> do we have a lot of comments, Mauro? Yeah, a lot of... Uh, hello from Omar. I think he's from ah, Turkey. Hi. Hello. Fernando, oh okay. Fernando Cruz, uh, Hermosa Anna Murphy. Ibrahim, hello, hello Ibrahim. Hi Ibrahim. And then there is Anna. Hi. Hello. Anna, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Our big friend Matthew Lee Hanson. Come on, hey, man. We were waiting for you. Don't Travis. be late. <laughs> Travis Vivona. Hi, Travis. Uh, but he is say hi to Matthew, so okay. Aww. Andres says, I too hoped I would write a ton of music, but it has been slow for me. Hope it comes back. It will come back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it would be better. I'm, I'm expecting a lot of new music being released in the next months because a lot of people oh, yeah. said that they, they were writing a lot of music so i want i, I, I want to hear them <laughs> malik Hi. says hello darlings and hey simon you are hey, not yeah. darling you are not darling we are you are not <laughs> i simon <laughs> a friend from mexico hi then hello so a lot, a lot of people are here tonight. Welcome, guys. You can say hello. Hello to everyone. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Tanya and another Hi, Tanya. from Mexico, Kimberly. Hello. A lot of people from Mexico. That's great. Okay, guys. Shall we start with the first official question? And of course, if you want to participate in the comments and ask questions for everyone in this chat, you are Free to do is, and we will be free to not answer your questions, as usual. So, <laughs> only the weird ones. Yes, of course. So there we come. Do do your worst, guys. Anyway, let's start with the first not weird question, uh, which is: When did you start singing, and how? That is impossible to answer. Um, <laughs> I I grew up in a musical family, so both my singers are opera. Both my singers, both my parents. <laughs> both my singers are opera parents. That's a good lapsus, yes. Yeah. Um, so you can imagine I was always surrounded by music and singing. And I started imitating opera singing as a child. And um, so it's really impossible to say. I actually didn't really want to become a singer. Um, no. I wanted to study philosophy and be like an academic and that clearly didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> I joined a band when I was 16. And the idea was at first to just play Hurdy Gurdy. And then uh, Kriegel of LVT, he asked me if I also sing. And my answer was just, I don't know, I can try. 
And that's how it started. I just kind of uh, accidentally ended up as a singer. Like it was never a conscious decision. You, yeah. you never realized that you were a singer? No, not really. I think just until recently when I really, I think it was when I started Stellar Darling that I kind of realized, oh, I, I might, you know, that might be a good thing to do for me. <laughs> but, um, before that, so, it just always felt like, you know, something that's just also there, but not, not really my... So maybe... So yeah, maybe just, the right question is, uh, when did you start playing the Ardi Gardi and how? <laughs> um, I started playing Hardy Gardi when I was 16. Uh, I just fell in love with the instrument and felt that I have to play it. Um, and then I joined Elvati three months later, so I had to learn it really fast. <laughs> yeah. And did That's you take awesome. lessons? I took, lesson? Yeah, I took a couple of lessons to just kind of get into it, but then I immediately joined a band. So basically that's how I learned how to play it, just by learning their songs. Yeah. Cool. That's always a good a good way to learn an instrument. Having already uh, a gig or something like that to yeah. <laughs> force you and study. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't just uh, play the Ardigard, you play a lot of instruments, isn't it? Um, I kind of half ass my way through a lot of things. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a master at any of them. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I like to do a lot of things instead of one thing properly, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> I just get bored easily and I want more and more and um i'm interested in so many things so i could i could never just practice one instrument for six hours a day but which also means i'll i'll never be like a virtuoso but i don't think you know i don't think it's i need to fill another one of those yeah like, there's, the, there's I, the <laughs> I agree i think that we're virtuoso well i mean well it's my opinion uh there is no need to for more virtuosos, I mean, uh, well, maybe I'm an extremist with this, but I think that mm, too much technique always at full potential is something that doesn't interest me anymore. Like when I was a kid, maybe, I don't know, when I was uh, interested in, I don't know, fast musicians and all that stuff. Uh, then I discovered that music is something different, in my opinion. And I prefer those who searches for the right tone, the right sound, the right notes to use, and when to use them, uh, instead of those who use always everything they know and how they want to show how to play their instrument and how good they are on the instrument. But it's just my opinion. Yeah, there's and there's always the in between, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. I yeah. I kind of appreciate all kinds of stuff. I just um I I figured out that I am a certain way and I don't need to be all the other things. Um that's quite a it's really nice when you come to those terms with yourself and you just kind of know what your place is. That's cool. But, you know, I'm over 30, so I have to know these things. <laughs> we all are. I think it's called self-consciousness, and that's great. I think that when you find your, you know, your space in the world, and I'm not talking about the actual world, I'm talking about your world, the world where you want to live, it could be music, it could be, it could be even life, it could be everything. When you find your spot and you find what's good for you and how you are and you decide to be who you are, it's something great, I think. Yeah. Cheers to that. 
<laughs> <laughs> anyway, we do it. We have a lot of comments again. So go for it, Mauro. Yeah. I can read all the comments, guys. You are very, <laughs> you are too many, but I will try to do so. Andrew, uh, this is uh, an answer to the, the previous comment. I'm sure it will. I kind of uh, let the lockdown turn into a World of Warcraft addiction <laughs> that I've since stepped away from. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> it's a very addictive game. <laughs> yeah, like every RPG. I so. hope you can uh, get out of it somehow. <laughs> you can do it. Leshi says, I was lucky enough to have finished writing music just before the lockdown to during the last months I just had slave away in the studio and released my EP two weeks ago. So cheers to you. That's great. Andres thinks that 2021 could be a year for many new albums and hopefully concerts again. Yeah, let's hope so. We all hope so. And this is a a uh, good thing for our uh, this live chat because Kyle says, "Hey guys!" and Hi, Kyle. I Hi. think he discovered Hello. discovered the band because of this chat because <laughs> he's saying, "I listened to Seller Darling, the Seller Darling's first album last night. It was amazing." Cool, thank you, Kyle. You have to listen to more bands. <laughs> You cannot discover all the bands you're listening to with our live chat. You you have to widen your horizons. <laughs> we we'll, we'll we'll talk about it tri privately. Don't worry. I, I, I do a playlist for you. We have a question from Morgan. Anna, when do you start the Vieille la Rue? Sorry, I'm French. Uh, don't be sorry. Um, I would think I was sixteen, so. Shit, that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> <Not more. laughs> yeah. It was that, was that the, yeah, when, when do you start the, yeah. Yes. So 15 years ago. Okay. Then there's a question that you uh, already answers, answer in a way. How did you choose the Hardy Gardy as an instrument? It is not an obvious one. I just love the sound. I, I can't really explain why. I just, um, my gut told me that I need to play this. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a specification from Kyle. Actually, I learned of them previously, but didn't listen to their music yet. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, clarified. That's good. Kyle came prepared to this life. That's great. <laughs> and Morgan well, says, thank you. Well, actually, I, I met you guys uh, when we shared the stage back in Mantova. I didn't know about you, about Slav Darlings. And I, I fell in love with your sound because um, uh, at least the first album, when I listened to the first album, I really enjoyed it. And... Uh, I managed to buy the oh, t-shirt. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, we were playing together. And actually, um, it's awesome, the spell as well. And uh, when I first listened to um, This Is The Sound, I, I loved it so much that I kept listening for it uh, for weeks and weeks. And that never happened to me since when I was uh, maybe 16 because uh, during the years I managed to listen to some songs, some playlists, but it never happened to me that uh, I loved the band so much that I kept to listen to it. And that actually happened with uh, This Is The Sound, your, your first album, and that Aww. was great. That's really nice to hear. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I remember those days. It was talking about you all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you wore that t-shirt that very t-shirt like i don't know for months we we decided to let him know 
uh, that he we want him to wash it because it was a problem for the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was using you this on the tour and on yeah. the tour and you know oh, this is bad. You have to change a lot during the tour. So especially if you are a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry that we caused problems. Um, <laughs> no, the problem is him because he needed to buy more t-shirts. Yeah. More. Yeah. You're right. When well, you're right, yeah. you're right. <laughs> this was the point I wanted to get. Anyway, <laughs> we have a question for everyone, right, Mauro? Yeah, from Andre. What other instruments will interest to learn to play for everyone? Anna Do first. Like start, Anna? Me first. Um, so I'm trying to learn the Nukelharpa at the moment, which is a Swedish folk instrument. Unfortunately, when I play it, it still sounds like a dying cat. So I still have a long <laughs> way to go. Um, apart from that, I really want to learn the drums, just because um, I think it's um, one of the most amazing instruments. And uh, when somebody plays it well, I'm just in awe. And um, at some point, you know, I want to do everything myself. <laughs> so um, it's good to, to be able to play as many instruments as possible, if that's your goal. <laughs> what about you, Mauro? Well, I'm getting uh, into meditation music uh, and my first, my Next victim, it will be a flute. I would like to learn something, a Chinese flute or Indian flute or something like that. Yeah, not the recorder, oh. I hope. <laughs> no, I, I hate Everybody it. Everybody hates the recorder. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't stand that, that sound, so yeah. <laughs> what about you, Simon, the recorder? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to improve in playing the piano because uh, I'm getting some ideas by playing it, but um, I'm not good enough to record the, the ideas properly. And I would like to uh, learn guitar and the cello. The cello, really? Yeah, I love the sound of the cello, but I know it's very difficult to play, so... It will probably never happen. <laughs> never say never. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I still have to learn to play the drums properly. So you, <laughs> you see. <laughs> and what about you, Fajo? Me, uh, I I'd like to since I'm good with these fingers, I'm able to play this finger, but I'm not able to play these. I'm I'm not kidding. I'm not able to do the same thing with my right hand. I want to play my right hand properly. I have the problem with both my fingers actually. <laughs> uh, I I can. Uh, no, uh, well. Since I studied two very different instruments, uh, I studied classical piano and then uh, bass guitar. I'd like to change and I'd like to play drums as well, but someone in the band says that it's better if I don't, because <laughs> the right drum parts, they are always very complex. And I think they are right. It, Maybe it's better if I don't touch the drums because it would be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Stick with the bass, man. Yeah, okay, okay, no problem. No problem. I don't have time right now, so yeah. <coughs> I don't like to do things uh, badly. And if I wanted to learn an instrument, I would focus on it and I need time for that. So yeah. No, no, no more time. Sorry. <laughs> or lucky if you if you don't have to listen to what I Play anyway. Uh, we still have another question, right, Mauro? Yeah, from Simone. Anna, what is the best memory you have of your Italian gigs? Wine, <laughs> wine and food, and lovely people. 
Yeah, no, people, it's not important. Wine is the first thing. Um, we agree on that. I know, <laughs> the, the audiences are always amazing. Um, and if you're, if you have stage fright or any other forms of anxiety, then it really helps if people are so welcoming. So, yeah, that's always. Also, it. wine helps for that. Oh, yeah, it does. But that's <laughs> dangerous. You shouldn't get used to it. <laughs> After the show. Yes, of course. Of course. Never drink before the show. This is our rule. I don't know if it works for you the same, but yeah, oh, maybe as a singer. I I don't like just not do it at all, but I don't want to make a habit of it. So, you know, I think rituals are something very dangerous. So I try to stay away from those. That's very interesting. And I couldn't agree more. Oh, yes. Uh, Simone replies. Yes, because I think I was to all of them, and I am curious to know if your favorite was also my favorite one. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> he was at every Italian gig. Oh. So he wanted to know if your favorite one was also his. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> That's difficult. <laughs> that, is, that is incredibly difficult. Um, I don't think I could choose one, to be honest. Um, might be a boring answer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so which one was it, I'm wondering? Yeah, which one was your favorite, Simone? We want to know now. In the meantime, Laurelia has something to ask you, Anna. Of course. It's the... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I try. Anna, do you give lessons of Hardy Guardia online? Yes, I do. Um, via Zoom. And there's this platform in Switzerland. It's called instrumentor.ch. And that's I, I teach via that platform. So check it out. We great. do have a very, very ready and uh, <laughs> fast man behind the scenes. Uh, the link will appear down here in maybe one or two days. So don't worry. He's working on it. I can see it. Oh, wow. He, he's working on the link uh, in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, we have the reply from Simone. Probably the last one with Forever Steel. Oh, that was that was recently. Was it last year? I'm not sure. You played at the Legend Club in Milan, probably. Yeah, yeah. Really cool club. Yes. This is not a cool question from Melike. Yeah. Okay, this is for Anna. When I heard Freeze at the first time. Sorry, new comments, I have to scroll up. Okay. I heard Freeze at the first time. I became addicted to it, and then I addicted the whole Spell album. It's more than just an album, really impressive. I'm curious about how you and others decided to tell a story of love between Death Angel and her lover. <laughs> Death Angel, wow. Um, well, the, the idea behind the concept isn't is by no means my invention. I was just inspired by a very old motive, which is death and the maiden. And it's been depicted in literature, uh, poetry, art since uh, the Renaissance times. And I just wanted to take that motive and create my own story out of it, uh, which is a girl falling in love with death, wanting to join him and trying to reach him in different ways um but what was the question uh why i don't know it just uh, there's there's no good answer for why things inspire you it's just it's just there all of a sudden there is no need to know why inspiration comes you know so yeah it's good because it's it's art you know 
in the meantime, Fitted didn't get the, the name of the platforms where they can find your uh, online lessons. Oh, okay. Oh. He, he found it. He found it. Great, great work. Great job, man. Great job. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> so you can find the links down here uh, if you want to take online lessons from Anna. Uh, you teach also singing, right? Yes. And any other instruments? No, I teach um, audio production, so just mixing, basically, which is probably the easiest thing to teach online. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, which uh, DAW do you use? I use Pro Tools. Okay. Only Pro Tools? Yes. Okay, that's good. So, guys, if you want to know how to mix uh, on Pro Tools, but I think any other DAW will work because mixing is an art and it's not depending on the DAW. Uh, you can take online lessons from Anna. Yes. <laughs> Just check the link below. Thanks for the advertising. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, anyway, let's go on with our questions. Uh, yep. When did you decide to become messy room to my uh, power don't worry supply there we go <laughs> okay i'm back no problem okay. when did you decide to become a professional singer which was the spark that brought you to this decision <laughs> i don't know uh, am i a professional singer um the it's it's probably the same answer as to the other question that it wasn't a conscious decision i mean at which point is a band a professional band? I don't think the band itself realizes until, you know, years later. I guess it's it's that moment when you decide this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to make this my number one priority and nothing else. And that happened at a very early stage, I guess, um, before I was 20 even. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm just going to go for this and you know, not do university or any other jobs. I'm just gonna, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna try. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always a good point, this one about professionalism. Uh, I think it's something you decide. It's nothing that comes from others. You have to start and decide to be a professional. Uh, no one else could do that for you. So yeah, if you think you are a professional and you're working to be professional, you are a professional. I think it's not the results, it's the attitude. Yeah. This is my opinion, at least. <laughs> I think it's a very harsh word, you know, professional. Like, what, what does it mean exactly, you know? I mean, sometimes I come off stage and I wonder, you know, why are you doing this? Should <laughs> someone else be doing your job and you do something else? But we all have that, right? It's, it's never, you're never good enough. Or at least I know a lot of people who think that way. I, I think that that's the most important part of being a good professional, being uh, or, or a good musician at least, because uh, it's very important to be able to better yourself. And if you don't know that you can be better, you will never get to get better, you know. That's you have to, you have, you have to uh, know that you are not good enough to get good enough. And at least for me, I think that I will never get good good enough because when you achieve something, there is always more, and it's always something that opens you a new world. And is endless yeah that's true and that's stops, but that's what makes it interesting as yes well. of course that's the great part of studying and being a musician and being a professional is the constant research for this in my opinion mm -hmm. if you stick with what you have and you decide oh, okay that's enough that's not being a professional that's being just someone who plays some music it's a matter of awareness. Yeah. 
That's so serious tonight. That's great. I love this kind of thing. <laughs> oh. Anyway, Kyle says uh, it may not have been your hintet, but you sound amazing. We agree. And that's not the right comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But when I scroll down, sometimes my computer is a little bit uh, slow. So I, I click. I click. OK. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Andrew yeah. is asking some tips for mix and engineering. Here we are. I'm not. If you could give right. only one chip one. regarding. The one regarding that's really the... hard. Um, you, you, you just got to know uh, what you're listening to. So I guess the most important thing in the chain is either your speakers so if you want to work with those, but then you also need a good room. So maybe if you're working from home, just a good pair of headphones that are open and not closed. Because otherwise, um, yeah, you just won't have a good judgment of frequencies and bass especially. So I think that's where to start. You, you got to know what you're listening to and know it well. And it doesn't have to be the best the speakers that I work with, they're not like some hi-fi $100,000 <laughs> whatevers. They, I just know them very well. I know what they sound like. And yeah, so I think start off with that. And then, and then there's a thousand more things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a world, but yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, a tip that uh, a lot of people told me as well. Uh, a, a lot of people listen to, to music, uh, a lot of sound engineer listens to music uh, in their car, for example, and they, when they have to do the, uh, the levels, or the final levels of some mix or check, I don't know, stereo image or something like that, even if it's technically very wrong to listen to the stereo image in your car, they go in the car because they are used to listen to music on that. Uh, yeah, exactly. stereo and yeah they do the trick there it's it's about your ears right it's not about the gear you're using yeah i mean you know great gear is great of course um, but you're not gonna get anywhere if you don't have a feel for the music if you don't have trained ears it's gonna be pointless yeah so you can you can all and the, the great thing about our really rapid technical developments is that we can already achieve great things at home you know that wasn't possible in the in the 70s you know you you had to go to an expensive studio and now we can all kind of you know do our own little things and just you know start out that way that's great yes i agree which is both good and bad but yeah <laughs> yeah it has ups and downs sides. yes what Simon? What? Yeah, I also have a good tip about mixing and mastering. Go join, join Anna on instrument, or so she can give you <laughs> any tip. <laughs> oh yes, book a lesson. This is turning into an, ad an advertising live chat. That's great. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> we have a lot of a lot of questions for you, Anna. Go for it. This is an interesting one. The song Rebels from the first Seller Darling album is probably my favorite piece of music. I'm wondering, is there is there anything Anna can share about it? How it came to be? The inspiration behind it? Um, yeah, actually that was, um, I think, the very first song that I wrote for Seller Darling. Um, I just made a demo of it at home. And we were kind of deciding on, you know, what sort of should our sound be and finding it. And I sent it to the guys and then we worked on it together in the rehearsal room. And the idea behind the lyrics, Rebels, is actually connected to the three of us leaving El Veiti. Um, You know, the rebels like get up in the middle of the night to just <laughs> kind of fight the system. So, yeah, it was inspired by that whole breakup which might be interesting for whoever knows about that <laughs> go for the okay. next question yeah 
from Gerard Garcia Mulet. I'd like to congratulate Miss Murphy for her great work with the spell. I really enjoyed it and continue to do so. One question, do you plan to put the book back on sale? Uh, first of all, thank you very much. I'm very glad you like it. Um, we will not put the book back on sale because if you if you do a limited edition of something, it would, you know, be kind of not. It would make the item less special if you just make it unlimited in the end. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's what limited editions are. They are limited. Yeah, but it it I was really surprised at how well that it sold and yeah now it's sold out i'm very sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry to and be <laughs> andrew says thank you i think audio engineering is so interesting because it's both a technical science and a creative exercise at the same time too absolutely oh yes you have to be technical and musical at the same time and that's great Hi, Stefano. Hi, Stefano. Hi, Stefano. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's go on with our questions. Uh, which are the albums and the bands that have influenced you the most during your musical growth? Ooh, so <laughs> funny. Um, I don't know. It, could you guys even answer a question like that? Um, Absolutely not. That That's why we... <laughs> Um, I mean, there's the, the thing is that the music that I listen to a lot is very far from what I write. Um, I, I listen to a lot of, I've always listened to a lot of black metal. Uh, so, I don't know why, it just kind of speaks to me. But I grew up with opera music. I think there's a lot of classical influence in my songwriting. Um, and I also love bands that are inspired by classical music, but they take it and put it into a rock context, you know, like Queen, for instance, or a, a lot of progressive bands, for that matter. Um, but there's so much, you know, my, my dad introduced me to the Beatles and their songwriting has just, you know, stuck. Um, so it, there's really just everything that I that I love, but I couldn't say that any of it inspires my songwriting. I think it's just a mix of everything, plus the experiences and the stories that I want to tell. Um, singing wise, I was very much inspired by Jeff Buckley, by Björk. Um, yeah. Cool. What about you guys? <laughs> I, I knew I was expecting this. That's why, Mauro, what do you think about it? Well, uh, it depends from the time of my life because it changes every, every month, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would say, as a guitar player, I was inspired, first of all, from guitar monsters like, uh, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix, Satriani and all of that guys, because when you're learning, uh, you want to achieve that kind of, uh, of uh, ability. But uh, during the growth, you, you change your, your goals and that's it. That's because you realize that you will never get to them. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's the, the real course, yes. What about you, Simon? Oh, well, I used to have some moments in my life while I listened always to the same band. So I had a Metallica moment when I was 14. Then I had a Dream Theater moment when I was 15. I had the Pain of Salvation moment when I was 16. Then I started to listen a little bit to melodic death metal like uh, Opeth and uh, um, Dark Tranquility. And then after that, I, I had a Pink Floyd moment, uh, a Led Zeppelin moment. Then I started to listen to a lot of stuff. And uh, I started to listen to any kind of music. Uh, and that's it. 
I, I, I did that actually at the, the, the chance to fall in love with a band and to listen to the album many times as uh, it happened to be with uh, This Is The Sound when I discovered you actually. I'm saying it uh, honestly and it was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Just, oh, this, this sound is amazing. Uh, and I kept listening to it while running, while I was, uh, you know, working out, while I, I was reading, while I was uh, driving. It's very cool. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And about you, Fajo? I know I was trying to see if you uh, <laughs> forget <laughs> about the question. Anyway, uh, well, I started back in the days listening to a lot of classical music because it, that was what I was studying. But I listened to a lot of Italian singers and artists when I was very young that were influenced you a lot from blues and rock and all the stuff. So I explored those areas when I was younger, I mean, when I was like 12. Uh, then during my adolescence, I started listening to some Iron Maiden, but also to electronic music and a lot of different stuff. And nowadays I listen to any kind of music from classical music to black metal, death metal, uh, electronic music, pop music, whatever it means. And uh, funk music a lot. I don't know. I, I just like music, every kind of music. And if it's new and if the sound attracts me, even some very experimental stuff like Flume, Sophie, and all this stuff, I I listen to it and I try to get anything I can from it and, and try to put it in my musical language. And I fail miserably every time. So I get back to metal. <laughs> that, that's how it works for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a lot of comments again, right? Yes. Go for it, then. There is an interesting question from Static X. Sleep. Seller Darling plan an online concert? We actually played two of them. Um, one of the shows we, we live streamed from my studio, actually. And then the second one was a kind of festival that Merlin actually organized with other bands. So yeah, those were the, the first and maybe last <laughs> shows. <laughs> OK. Kyle agrees with you about Jeff Buckley. And that's not the, the right comment. Uh, because <laughs> there is another comment that I yeah. scrolled. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I can You're very good with guys. computer. I can Did you study guys. IT it's technology? Not, it's not me, it's the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, no Jeff Buckley is fantastic. I wish that he was still with us. Oh, me too. But his music is, so at least. Grace is an awesome album. Andres, could there be an instrumental song of Cellar Darling in the future? A folk prog journey with long instrumental song may be something interesting with a lot of with a lot of room to experiment with. Yes, actually I've been wanting to write an instrumental song for a really long time with Cellar Darling. We just for some reason we haven't done it yet, but it is on our list of things to do. It's like asking to a bass player uh, if they are ever gonna do a song without the bass. <laughs> no, <laughs> she actually played the Ardi Yeah, no, okay, but okay. <laughs> Good question, Andres. Guys yeah. agrees with Simon about Opeth. Orchid, is, Orchid by Opeth is one of the best debut albums ever made. This is the right comment. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and hello from Scotland. Hi, hello. Jack. He is the bass player of Operation Mindcrime. Jeff Band Date. Of Jeff Date, yes. Hi, Jack. How are you? Yeah, we two, we two together in 2018, right, guys? Yeah, yes. Yes. 
And another comment from Kyle, just about the only music I don't listen to is country, at least the kind we have now. Why? Not a big fan either, to be honest. I, I am pretty sure there is something good in country as well. We just have to search deeper. That's how positive I am. It was we a are. Picture. Hope you're well. We hope you're well as well. <laughs> and I'm all for an instrumental. The Hardy Gary makes for a really unique sound. Instrumental, we shall do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what people want. Anyway, uh, let's go on with our questions. Uh, about Seller Darling, how the project was born? What are the story and the concept behind it? Well, Seller Darling is actually the result of a split with another band, with LVT. Uh, the three of us left, and it was just kind of self-evident that we would all continue playing music. We didn't really have to discuss whether we would stick together. It was just kind of clear. And we pretty much immediately started writing songs. We weren't really sure about, you know, what should we do? We didn't really discuss, should it be metal? Should it be rock? Um, we just started writing and that was it. And it just kind of turned out to be the way it is. Um, and it's funny that our debut album is called This Is The Sound because we were still kind of searching for our sound. And I think, because um, it's such an eclectic album. So it's kind of ironic that it has that title. Um, and we just want to tell stories. It's not, I don't want to write personal or too personal lyrics with Stellar Darling. We see ourselves as storytellers, but from a kind of modern age. So not stories that we already know in some sense. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Yes, and this answer leads me to the next question because I, I'd like to know what's the songwriting process of the band and how do you usually come up with your ideas? Well, it's either myself or Evo that write at home. So we create demos and we either just, you know, record whatever we can or program and then we usually meet up together and then work on those demos as a band so it's a very like we include each other it's not just one person who tells the other people what to play and that's always been very important to us that we kind of grow together as a band oh yes yes i agree with it also because uh we, we do the same thing uh because we want to uh, let anyone to be as creative as possible when you write music and you uh, well we share our ideas uh, in real time even for other instruments it's not like uh, I'm the bass player and uh, the drummer says no you have to hit that note that I won't listen to him because he's the drummer is just another musician and we are all creating music together and if he says okay try that I'll try it and of course, since it's drummer, maybe it will sound shit, but yeah, I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> At least it's on time, yes. That was subtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about live shows, do you remember your first live performance with Cellar Darling and what was your best live performance ever? And this is a very hard question, I know. I don't remember the first live performance because you know how the brain has this um, mechanism that if it wants to protect you from something, it makes you forget. <laughs> so <laughs> this protection mechanism set in right after we came off stage. So no, I can't <laughs> tell you anything about it. I'm sorry. This is a good answer. I, I, I should steal it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, yes, it's, the, it, it's the wine <laughs> mechanism. No accounts of this ever happening. <laughs> hmm. 
That, that's good. That's good. I, I I would have used it when I was back at school. You know, I I didn't like what I wanted to, what I needed to learn, and I could have used this excuse during interrogations <laughs> and all the stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, Mauro? We have some uh, yeah, okay. questions. This is a difficult one, I think. It will probably sound like a silly question. Anna, you seem like a very spiritual person. Do you have a religious or mystical faith that has ever influenced your musical choices? Uh, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> I, maybe it seems like that. I can I can see how you would think that if you listen to our music, but that's more just you know brain weird. I, I'm in some kind of weird universe, but it's still I believe in science. Uh, I believe what I know, what I can see. So I think I would be a, an agnostic of some sort. Uh, I'm not a hardcore atheist because even that to me seems very religious. Like they're they're too intense for me because I just don't care enough to call up myself something like that. But no, I, I wouldn't really call myself spiritual in any way. I just believe in music and living in the moment. And yeah, I, I think. I shared a lot of thought about this with Simon in the past. I think that uh, it's very poetic science because, uh, well, science is that it's that discipline that describes reality or at least tries to describe reality at best. Uh, and when you do that and you understand what's happening around you, and you find out how great things work uh, from the biggest to the smallest thing in the universe, in the whole universe, is just amazing and astonishing. And I find the poetry behind it. I mean, it's, it's fascinating. It's, I don't know, uh, it's, some form of mysticism, I think, but it's very stuck into reality, which is the best, in my opinion. We, we don't need to believe in something. We just want to see it and be amazed by it. That's yeah, what I just, think. And use the imagination, which is endless, right? Oh, yes. Even the concept of endless is impossible to get for us, of course. But if you use your imagination, you can get near that. And uh, that's, that's something that fascinates me, for example. It's a very simple and yet art concept, you know. Yeah, brains are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, back to not so serious things. <laughs> there is a question from Andrew. What inspired you to do cool shredding guardy solos on some songs? It's a unique take on using the instrument. Yeah, um, that basically happened when when I started writing songs. Because uh, when I played Hurdy Gurdy and El Beti, I obviously wasn't the main songwriter. I just kind of, you know, contributed some parts. And I knew that as soon as we were going to start our own band, we weren't going to be a folk metal band because I don't write those types of songs. So I just needed to find a place for the hurdy-gurdy because I wanted to still continue using it. And I use it more like a kind of a lead instrument, like a guitar. And it's really cool because Evo, our guitar player, he doesn't like doing solos. And I think it's a much more creative solution if I just, you know, do them on my instrument instead. Um, yeah, it's all about finding a place for the hurdy-gurdy. And I think it's it combined with effects, it's so cool. It sounds so great. So, that's, a, yeah. that's a very cool 
uh, fact of your band because actually this is what uh, blowed my mind when I listened to it the first time because I'm not so so much into folk music or folk metal music but what what I liked so much it was the way how the Ardi Gardi uh, merged with the rest of the sound in uh, not a folk way, let's say that. And uh, I just loved the sound that you um, managed to uh, find out for, for the band. It's really cool. Well, thank you. There is a question from Anna. With, with what song did the story of the spell begin? And what can we expect from the new album? Hmm. Do you mean uh, which song was written first, or...? I, I think that. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. I guess. Um, the, the first song that I wrote was uh, Love. So it kind of, that kind of started off the whole concept as well. I just had these ideas of really cheesy <laughs> melodies. <laughs> But uh, at the same time, dark and weird, and and that's when when I got the whole idea for the story and new album. I am not going to speak of that just yet, but there is something happening, and you will probably hear soonish. I wanted oh, yeah. to be all mystical about it, but I'm really bad at that. So. <laughs> 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 Uh, I want to say something about the new album of Cellar Darling. If you want to know and be updated on everything, you maybe just have to go and follow the band on their social media. Uh, you can find them down here. You will find them on the description uh, under the chat because this chat will stay online. So be aware on what you say, Anna. Uh, and <laughs> uh, well, all... This is so professional. You see, we do have a guy who learned to use the internet, and he is doing it he's doing for us. The guy is Fede, of course, is also a guitar player in the free time. You're welcome. Uh, okay, you, you can go on with the comments in the meantime. Aura. Yeah, there is a, an interesting question for all of us. What do you do when you lose inspiration? Drink wine. <laughs> no, um, the the thing is, you, as you are already suggesting with your question, you can't really control it. You can't force it. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not. Um, and you know, either you just deal with it and you just do something else. Um, what inspires me a lot is if something is constantly happening. Like life has to move and not stagnate. So if I go hiking or, you know, take on a new hobby of some sorts, do some painting, something I don't do a lot, that's going to, you know, get the juices flowing again. Um, or else if it, ha if it has to be something music related, practice can <coughs> be inspiring, getting better, working on the technique. Or just doing something different. Like sometimes if I don't have ideas for really emotional driven parts, like a, a particular story, then I'm just going to work on something which is purely technical, like, you know, odd time measures or something that's just kind of weird but doesn't need like an emotional type mm -hmm. of inspiration. So, yeah, there's different things you can do. Or drink wine. Like I said, that better. works always. Yes. What right. about you guys? Well, in the past, I used to um, pissed off with, with myself when I didn't have inspiration. But uh, right now, I I know that I just just have to wait to the inspiration to come, and I, I'm noticing that I'm. Uh, truly inspired by nature. So when I uh, can't find uh, a new idea, I just uh, you know go out for a walk on uh, thinking about nature gives me 
really true inspiration. Yeah, I agree. Simon? Uh, I take a walk, mm, not strictly in nature, also in the city sometimes. I like to walk in the city while listening to music and to watch the people walking into the city and in the meantime uh, to focus on what I'm listening with uh, my phone uh, or with meditation. Sometimes I, I meditate to get some inspiration. And that helps a lot because I, I clear my mind and when I clear my mind, I have the opportunity to um, connect the ideas in a, in a better way. What about you? Yeah, uh, well, I, I used to go hiking when I lose inspiration, which happens a lot, to be honest. But when, when I was in lockdown, I learned to find new, I had to find new ways to get the inspiration back. And I started doing very technical stuff. Being a sound engineer as well, I studied a lot. I got back and studying a lot of techniques and, and tried to do some very technical work with all my machines and all the stuff. I studied some synthesis and something like that. And well, I tried to improve myself. And when I go in very technical stuff, creativity comes back because if you go, for me, it works like that. If you go at the complete opposites, you can get back what I don't know. My my brain works weirdly. Uh, if you focus on something too technical, uh, it just gets lots and uh, a lot of information about technical things. It, it wants to get back to creative mode. <laughs> so that's <laughs> how I start. I try to uh, accelerate the process. It doesn't work every time, but yeah. At least if it doesn't work, I learn new things, so that's good. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Simone is asking, did you, Anna, expect that the prog scene could appreciate so much your music to reward you with the Progressive Music Award for the best video? I did not expect that. So it was a very... <laughs> um, it was a huge honor to be there in the first place. And yeah, we were incredibly happy about that. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is very difficult to touch that Zanfonia. I think it's the Spanish word from Archivari. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's not difficult to touch it. It's <laughs> difficult. It's kind of difficult to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Best answer ever. <laughs> and Anna, if you weren't a musician, what would you do? You are the best from Sebastian. Thank you. Um, I Well, then I would just be a sound engineer. Does that count? Yes. It counts, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm biased, but yes, it counts. OK. There is another question, but either then I'd be fucked. <laughs> we will answer later. Are you playing? Are you planning another another solo album? I'd love to hear that. I am planning it, but yeah, I would also love to hear it. Um, <laughs> I don't really have any material yet, but I hope it's gonna come. I hope inspiration comes. You're still you're still in the early stage of that album. Yes, very early. I just know that it's. That I would like to do and it. And that's the first. That's the first step. Yes, <laughs> that's important. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I lost track of our question, but I think we. This is the next one. Uh, what are the plans for Seller Darling in the future? That's hard to say at this point. Um, we are actually at the moment. We're taking a bit of a break. Um, we were just at the studio. I'm not going to make a huge secret out of that. So there's going to be something happening pretty soon. 
but apart from that, since three tours got canceled, we're taking a break from, from playing live and we're using this time to focus on creative projects. Yeah, and then I hope that we can go back on tour next <laughs> year. But, you know, we just can't know at this point, right? So we just have to go with the flow. It's just hope at the moment. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, very same thing, actually. We re re released the album during the lockdown. We never played it live for any, not, not even one show. We had planned one show the day before, uh, after the album release, but we couldn't play, of course. We decided to release the album anyway to, because we wanted to give some music to our friends and the people that listen to our music. Uh, but yeah, we are taking a break, of course, a forced break from playing live. In the meantime, Julia had a baby, so it was a good timing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, we are focusing on writing some new material and we'll see it will be a little bit sad to release new material without ever never played the new album before but we'll see if if it is something that has to be done we will do it it's just well, how it is you cannot work with everything oh, yes we adapt it's music music doesn't care about what happens in the world uh, do you have any side projects besides Solar Darlings? Yes. Um, like we talked about, I have my solo project. Um, then I have Lethe, which is like an experimental kind of... I don't like the word avant-garde, but everybody's calling it that, so I'm just going to go with it. Um, which is a project that I'm doing with Torhege Sky, who is also in Manis, which is a really cool uh, kind of trippy black metal trip hop something band from Norway. And so us two started this project and we actually just released a single a few weeks ago and we're gonna release like a limited single thing in December. <laughs> um, I have Fragmund, which is my folk band. We play Swiss folk music. We haven't released an album in quite a while, so we're we're kind of surprised that our label hasn't dropped us yet. But maybe they also just forgot about us. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, we're called Fragmund. Uh, then there's there used to be Nuclear Storm, which I was part of, uh, which was a, a project with Freddy Schneider, who's a close collaborator of Seller Darling, two multi-instrumentalist. I had a side project with Mary Tadic, who used to play in L80. Uh, it's called God Number Universe. We just have one release, but we're always talking about, you know, doing something again. And I'm pretty sure I forgot something. But yeah. So a lot of side wow. projects. <laughs> That's great. Do you sleep? Oh. <laughs> yes, I do. But, but that's the thing, you know, I, that, that's why I haven't released a solo album since 2013. It's just because there's too much going on. So maybe I would have to, so at some point, break it down a bit. <laughs> Why? Why? If you can do it, do it. <laughs> Mauro, do we have any yeah. comments? Yes. Can we think of a Urban Scry featuring Anna Murphy song in the future? Why not? Yeah. If she agrees, <laughs> that's up to her. We are yeah. already, always <laughs> open to collaborations, of course. Yeah. That would be great, I think. That would be cool. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is an interesting question from Sebastian. 
If you had to choose a musician to collaborate with, regardless of the musical style, who would it be? You guys go hmm. first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, regardless also of if he's dead or not. <laughs> Because in that case, I would go for Beethoven. Wow. wow. Yeah, we have to shoot for the stars. Hmm. Hmm. Ha, got you. Uh, I think he, wasn't, he was never in the best moods, though. <laughs> I don't care. It's just music. <laughs> um... I would go for Efren Lopez at the moment. He's um, the best hurdy gurdy player out there, or one of the best. And I love the music that he writes. I just ca I can't really think of anything else at the moment. <laughs> what about you guys? Yeah, just take one. Yeah, it could be obvious, but. I will choose Dimebag Darrell from Pantera. Yeah, we we, we like that people. It seems, <laughs> it like. seems like it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Simon? James Ashley, yeah, probably. Is alive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Uh, a lot of. Uh, uh great words for your projects but uh, let's go with the question how was your collaboration with fabi from illumini shade what do you think about her um well, it wasn't like a collaboration in the sense of a like project i basically just recorded um her vocals i mean just you know it's it's my job so it's it's what i do every day but um, I just engineered the vocals for the backing vocals for the album. And then from the song that they just released, I recorded all of her vocals at my studio. And it, I had a really great time because she is an amazing singer and an amazing person. And we got along really, really well. And it's, uh, and it's great to work with her at the studio. It's really... Um, it's one of those cases where it just makes your job so much easier when what's happening in front of the mic is just really good. As you know, that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big yes. Anna, many months ago, you showed off your spawn action figure for Buzz Invaders. Do you still have it? Do you guys have any other collectibles? I, yes, I remember that now. I actually, I don't think I have it anymore. It's, um, I think, still in the apartment that I used to live in. Um, so no, but I, I have some like Harley Quinn and Joker things at the studio. But yeah, I'm trying to actually get rid of as much stuff as possible like where it won't won't break my heart um because i i have this this romantic vision of just living out of one suitcase but it's that's probably never gonna happen anyway it's a deep clutter it's great to have goals <laughs> yes we can dream <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any collectibles? Uh, no, actually, I have a, um, a Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. <laughs> wow. Probably, and an alien from Alien 3, but they are toys from when I was a kid and I still have them because I know that they are, you know, collectible and interesting for somebody, so I kept them. I only have dragons, as you can see. <laughs> oh, <this stuff. laughs> nice. 
I don't. I don't have any collectibles. So yeah, I'm sad. Sorry. Okay, there is a, another good question from Gerard. You were not. You were not paying attention, Gerard. What? What? Allora, another question for all. What was it that made you dedicate yourself to music? What made you want to be musicians? Anna, don't tell me it was the wine. <laughs> And no, I was um, at that time. I didn't drink wine yet. I was too young. <laughs> a beer and it was just beer and weed. Um, <laughs> but, but that's the thing. I never decided on anything. I just kind of ended up uh, with Elveti. I was only sixteen. For some reason, I had really cool parents who said, "Yeah, you can try going that direction." Um, and then it just happened. It was never. It was never a conscious decision. And yeah, now I'm 31. Now I drink a lot of wine. And it, um, it doesn't help the, the music, but it makes everything more enjoyable. In general. Yeah, but that's not music. Music is not the problem, it's everything else. That's, yeah. that's when the wine part came in. Yeah. What about you guys? Because it's a question for all, so you cannot escape. Me. I was inspired from Mike Portnoy. When I listened to Dream Theater, I loved the, the, the way he played. He played drums and uh, how, how he plays the drums as a showman. And that inspired me. And after watching him live, I started to practice a lot and a lot to improve as much as I could. It was the same with our drummer, Merlin. Uh, that's really cool. I love the way Merlin play, plays. And also, uh, this is a fun fact, he, he's born uh, one day after me. Oh, wow. Because I was born the 20th of September. On the 20th of September, uh, he's, he's born the 21st. Oh, cool. <laughs> on, on 1986, actually, I am at the same age. Do you also have uh, his address, Simon? He is so a fanboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My story is uh, pretty standard and maybe boring, but I was a very shy, shy, shy guy. And I find in music a way to express myself. And that's it. Yeah, I don't have a story. Uh, I started <laughs> to play music when I was a kid because I liked it. And then I figured out that I couldn't do anything else. I mean, I studied other things out of music. I studied IT engineering and all the stuff. I'm very passionate about recording and all the technical stuff. I tried to apply engineering, actual engineering to sound engineering, which is different, uh, you know, signals, theory and all this stuff. But music is something that I always think about, like something that I couldn't do anything else than this. It's just I'm not able to do it. I tried other jobs. Uh, I could have had a better life, economically speaking. <laughs> but, well, music is just what makes me feel alive. So it's just, that's it. You you don't have to choose. You, you cannot choose about being a musician. If you are, you are, and you cannot be anything else, I think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> we have a very technical question from for Anna. <laughs> oh, what go. is your favorite wine? <laughs> finally, oh, it's, it's such a difficult question. Um, I love Cabernets from Napa Valley. I love uh, wine from Tuscany. 
Mm. Um, it always depends what you're going for. Am I only drinking or am I also eating food? You know, it's it's complex. <laughs> um, I love as far as white wine goes. I love Riesling. Mm. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, South America, the wine there on on during the Latin America tour, we had so much good wine in Argentina, uh, in Chile. It's mm -hmm. it's impossible to to decide on something. I'm always in the mood for something different. So there's just because wine is great. I love wine. I like great. <laughs> <laughs> Like fruit, it's fruit, so that's yeah. great. <laughs> well, actually, Fazio lives in a place full of uh, very good wines. Yeah, you know, yeah, Fazio, you have the key to convince Anna to collaborate with us. Oh, yes, you... yes, <laughs> uh, I live in, in an area which is called Oltre Popavese, which is where uh, Barbera, Bonarda, and all that mm. Pinot uh, is made. So nice. yes, we do have a, lo a lot of good wines. If you want to collab with Raven's Cry, we, we, we can pay you in wine. That's good enough for me. That's great. <laughs> we have a lot of it. Very good. <laughs> and moving back to, to music. Early Anna said about a new song on It Works. What can be shared of it? Nothing. Nothing, guys. I have to keep quiet, but you will hear something soon. That is all I'm going to say. OK, okay let's thanks. go back yes. to our, yeah, cheers, Simone. Cheers. Uh, our final question, which is something outside of music. And I don't know why we keep it as the last question, but OK. Uh, which are your hobbies and interests besides music? Uh, so there's the wine. Okay. I don't know. You might Talk have picked it. up on that. No, uh, it's the first time I hear this word today. Um, but it's it's actually really becoming a kind of hobby. I always I thought I used to think it's so snobby, the whole <laughs> wine thing, and now I'm completely obsessed with it. Um, I go hiking a lot. I love the mountains, uh, which is a good thing because I live in Switzerland. Uh, I like cycling. I cycle about, I don't know, like one and a half hours each day to, to work and back. I love swimming. I like reading. I, I would kind of like cooking if I had the time, but I don't. So I'm not that great at it. I think it's like I know like two recipes and the rest is just kind of mixing things together. Um, but that's pretty much it's very I don't have that many hobbies I, 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 I think that's a weird word I don't really know what it means hmm. I just do things um, but my, my main hobby is my job too so yeah what about you guys <laughs> <laughs> well I used to have time for hobbies I, I like of course, I like hiking. I like mountains as well. I like nature. Uh, I like off-roading. I built my own off-road, which is very little. It's not like those giant tracks uh, everyone thinks about. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but I don't have much time anymore. Also, my hobby is also my job, which is music, which is recording, mixing, and all the stuff. So it's difficult because I love doing my job. I would do it even if I wasn't paid, which luckily I am, so that's great. Uh, but that's my main interest, to be honest. What about you guys? Uh, about me, um, I like a lot to read, uh, actually, uh, spiritual stuff mystical stuff and about meditation i like meditation i like to read uh, about economics and managing things 
Uh, and actually, my RB right now, while we are on a, lock, on a lockdown and we can only work from home or in an office, I'm enjoying a lot to manage my dead company, which a really, really small company because uh, he, he's the only one employee. He's a plumber and uh, I'm helping him in the office. Sometimes I'm helping him with the actual work and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. So it's weird because that is a common job work. But for me right now, it's like an hobby and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Really, it's, it's strange. He fixed my home <laughs> last yeah. week. He came with his dad because he had a problem with the, uh, the, the heating system and he fixed this. Thank you, Simon and nice. Simon's dad. <laughs> You're welcome, whenever you want. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like Simon, I, I'm getting to meditation and stuff like that and i also like to watch uh, tv series or films or films movies uh, before I go to bed because i had to uh the necessity to relax myself before I go to sleep so i like to watch something <laughs> on tv to do so i used to do that i cannot do it anymore it just doesn't relax me anymore. It acti activates me, actually. <laughs> so, so. We have uh, some questions for from people who are watching us. There is a but, great uh, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> go, go with the uh, one with Stefano. OK, I mean, yeah. for all four, have you ever received word or bizarre gifts from your fans while on tour, even cases of wine count? <laughs> that's not weird, that's normal. <laughs> that's, a, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, we, we received rather, I would say, really cool gifts, um, like these I don't know. I don't know what these figures are called. There's these small figurines, and they come like in a box. Okay. It's some sort of. It's not from a comic or anything, but they're really famous. <laughs> like every sort of character exists in that form. Mm. Uh, I... And and there was this one fan who actually got us made into these figures. Oh, nice. Um. It, this story sounds really bad if you don't know what I'm talking about exactly, but it was really cool. <laughs> it's like action figures in a box. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So not not bizarre in that sense, but really cool. <laughs> yes, I have to say we uh, since the, the the question is for all four, I will answer for Raymond Cry. I remember that time when we received this very cool, iconic uh, <laughs> gift from one of our friends, I won't name him, because <laughs> he, he came and it was all made uh, liquor. Uh, but the thing is that the country we were in made it illegal to, <laughs> to, to, to make those things, and he just kept it under his you know, jacket and he just passed it uh, under no eyes and he said okay guys this is very dangerous don't let anyone see this gift because they will arrest you and we were oh thank you very much uh, <laughs> this is great it was great we we drank it all on our day off and it was great uh, do you guys remember it absolutely with biscuits. We were, <laughs> yeah, with biscuits. <laughs> we were going around in the forest uh, after two bottles of that. Of course, yeah. we're in Norway, but we we were not in Norway when we received the gifts. Anyway, in Norway is illegal to have homemade liquors. Oh, okay. 
also in Sweden and also in Finland. Who knows where we were? <laughs> Another question from Andre. Given the opportunity of making a score, what would you prefer to work on? A movie, a TV series, a theater play, a video game? Video game all the way. And so the question is, what is your favorite video game? My favorite game is Portal. The first one and the second one. I don't know it. <laughs> Really good. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you know Half Life? Okay. It's from the the same makers. Oh. Um. Ju just just play it. It's really amazing. <laughs> I dig Half Life a lot, so yes, I will. When I have time, so never. Sorry, I forgot that. The the good thing about it is that it's you know it's over at some point. It's oh. not something that you have to play for months on end. It it's pretty you know com compact oh, so okay you can the i think the first part i played it in a couple days uh and that was it and then you're you're happy because it's over <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i will and then we have the question that i think fajo was it <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> A question about studio work. How do you make this snare not sound shit? <laughs> well, first of all, the it always starts with the source. So, you know, if you have a drummer that doesn't hit the snare properly, it's going to be really hard um, to get it to sound good. You know, it's not always the microphone or the sound engineer or the preamp. It's just, you know, it's the drum or the drummer. So you start there, um, tune it properly um, so that it has a nice thing. And I, I wasn't, you know, trying to make it awkward, it. but it's just the truth. Um, and then, you know, if it sounds like shit, you know, just, I don't know, use samples. I personally don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why all these modern metal productions especially have to sound all the same because of the samples but you know if there's no other way you can also use samples to just kind of support the signal it doesn't have to be an audible you know sound replacement you can just use some like hits or something to just make it a bit more and add some reverb to the snare bottom and just compress the shit out of it I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, I think that I'm never satisfied with the sound of the snare. I could do, I could go on for days, but I think it's pretty common. Some engineers, there are some legends about it. No, anyway, yes, I agree. Uh, when you work with sound, the ninety-five percent of the sound comes from the source. So if it sounds good by here, it's already mixed, you know. Uh, I, I always try to uh, tweak less than possible after the recording. I always try to get the source right and sounding great, even without mixing it. And then I will just go and mix it as I wish after but if it sounds great already in the recording most of the work is already done and i totally agree with you for the sample things because it's not like using uh reamping with the guitars or something like that uh sampling drums is actually using another drummer on your uh, on your song on your album and I don't know, it's just, it's pointless to record a real drum and then substitute every hit, with, replace every hit with some other drummer with another drum kit. It's useless. And insulting. I, I don't like it, it's insulting, of course. It's like I recorded the bass on the album and they call another bass player to play it better. 
I mean, okay, I, I, I will do another take. I will, I don't know, change the bass, change the strings. I don't know. I will focus more on what I'm playing, but do not change my sound. That's me. I wanted to put my sound on the on the songs. Uh, we, as Raven's Cry, never use samples in our works. In fact, our albums do not sound like all the metal albums when where you can uh, listen to the same snare sound and the same kick sound or the same overall drum sound in every album uh, because we wanted to make something different and we wanted to put our sound uh, on, on the market but they criticized us a lot <laughs> for this because it doesn't sound that I don't know, present as the fake drums or something like that, but we wanted natural sound and people uh, are not used to it. Uh, it sounds different, but we believe that in the long term it will remain more with the real sound of the drums and real sound of every instrument. We wanted to put what it was in the studio on the album because that's our sound. And if you go and listen to us live, you will get that sound. You can find it on the album. I cannot say the same with all the sound replacement or other bands or something like that. They all sound great on the albums, but then you go and listen to them live and you say, okay, this is weird. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. For example. And, and that's something I don't like. So there you go. <laughs> and otherwise, just listen to Saint Anger. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was never a big fan of Metallica, uh, but I recognize, I, I don't like those sounds, but everyone knows it, you know? Yeah, definitely. You couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not necessarily good. They try to do something. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking about but yeah they did something <laughs> it was definitely radical <laughs> but yeah we, I mean, we also we have a similar approach we don't do a uh, seller darling doesn't use any samples it's a very natural sounding drum and we wanted that from the beginning but yeah it's like you say people are used to a certain thing you know um our ears get schooled over the years. People aren't used to natural productions anymore, or at least I would say young people that that listen to a certain genre of music. But that's yeah. just how it is. But I think the other thing can also have a comeback. You know, it's always these things come in waves and go, and then there's a kind of retro revolution happening. So I think, you know, we're on the right track. And I think a lot of people understand that this is supposed to sound like that. So, yes, I, I agree. <laughs> Let's go with the last question from Emmanuel. Uh... Favorite video game for all? Diablo 2. Me too. <laughs> I go for Alf Life. That's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we can answer also this question. Oh, okay, from I didn't saw it. Sorry, Kimberly. Kimberly, what's the first thing you all want to do after the lockdown? Playing live, of course. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was gonna say drink wine, but <laughs> <laughs> you can do it even in lockdown. Yeah. That that's the thing. I don't know what I would do differently after, as, as, except play live. Obviously, I think that's the that's the only thing that's going to change. I have one. You can go on stage and drink wine. I could. Perfect match. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the end of the live chat. Uh, we usually give the opportunity to our guests to give a very official final speech. 
and this is your time and your chance use your time wisely the final speech so much yes. pressure <laughs> <laughs> No, I, well, I just want to say thank you to you guys for, for putting this together. It's a really cool idea and it's very well executed with all the professional things happening here. And, uh, and yeah, it was nice to see you guys again. So thank you. And thanks for everybody who is watching this and is actually interested in what we have to say. Uh, thanks for your support. And also during the lockdown, all of the music lovers that are ordering from the band's web shops and streaming the music, um, you guys are kind of what's keeping this business alive. So thank you so much for supporting musicians and music and everything. Thank you. I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and it was a great pleasure to see you again, of course. Thank you for accepting our invite. It was awesome to have you here, uh, also very inspiring. And uh, uh, we hope to see you again on stage soon. <laughs> uh, or if you want, and uh, come to us. We do have a lot of wine. We are Italians, don't forget that. And <laughs> yes, it's some of the best. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank you again. Thank you for, to everyone uh, who was with us. And you will have the opportunity to check all the links. We are scrolling down here in the description of the video. We, you can subscribe to our channels uh, on YouTube and Facebook. And if you want to join our Telegram channel, you can. Uh, we'll make sure to ignore everything you say as usual. And uh, also, thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, let's stick together. And the lockdown will finish very soon. And we will be back on stage and playing live together. So thank you very much and have a great night or day or whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.